Hi everybody, I'm Todd Banner. Welcome to my channel. Well, I got trolled by a flat earther. What did I do, you might ask, to uh, receive such an honor? Uh, well, if you follow the channel, if, you, if you're subscribed, and even if you're not, because this short got a lot of views, about a month, maybe more than a month, between a month, month and two months ago, I put up a short uh, with a rainbow. Stepped right outside and saw this rainbow to the east. The sun was about to set. So I grabbed my phone and did a vertical video of that and put it up on YouTube as a short. And it got a lot of views, got a whole lot of views. And of course, those views tailed off and I kind of forgot about it. Well, sometime within the past two weeks, I got a, uh, I got a troll comment and it was some of the effect that this proves the world's, the earth is flat. And I checked out the uh, channel for the commenter and yeah, it was, you know, all it is is, Videos about how the earth is flat. Well, let's see. Why would somebody say that a rainbow proves the earth is flat? And the only thing that I can come up with is that every time I've ever seen a flat earth, you know, the flat earth explanation of the earth, the earth is a disk. It's a round disk, right? And uh, the North Pole is at the center of the disk. The South Pole doesn't exist. And then there's a dome that covers the entire earth. So the sky is a dome. It's actually a physical dome. And the only thing I can come up with is that they believe the rainbow is actually following the dome, which of course makes absolutely no sense at all, because if that were the case, the apex of the rainbow would be over the North Pole. That way. I'm currently looking east. So that's nonsense. And plus the other thing. When you're when you're looking at a rainbow, you're not seeing the whole, well, let's, let's, let me restate this. When you are viewing a rainbow from the ground, you are not viewing the full rainbow. Uh, the only way that you can see the full rainbow is if you're up above the ground. And occasionally, I think in the mountains you can see this, but definitely if you are flying and you have a window seat, which I used to do all the time, it is not uncommon for the plane to be flying past a cloud. And if the sun is on the other side of the plane, if you look out, you will see a perfectly circular rainbow with a shadow of the plane right in the center. So I've seen that a bunch of times. I have to hunt, would have to hunt to see if I actually have a photograph of that. But you can go online and find photos of that very easily, right? So I also got one other comment. It was kind of a troll comment. It was taking exception to my using uh, Israel comic. I will murder the last name. Hawaiian musician did a version of uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Now, you may have heard it. And so I used that, but I, that was through YouTube. So someone took exception to my using or taking advantage of uh, that. But my assumption is YouTube having an agreement with the, license, the music licensing companies, and BMG and ASCAP, is that uh, this guy's estate, because he passed away quite a long time ago, uh, gets, gets compensated for that. If I'm wrong, let me know. But I think all the artists that we can use on uh, YouTube Shorts are getting compensation. Um, probably a little teeny bit for each short, but you know, given YouTube and the size of it, probably turns into actually real money. Anyway, but back to the flat earth. The funny thing is that what this reminded me of is a, uh, an incident on uh, NASA's Instagram page. Um, and if you're into astrophotography or astronomy, you really need to follow uh, NASA's Instagram uh, account. But what, uh, and they not only put up astrophotography, they sometimes put up just regular photography showing aerial phenomena. And this may have been a photo of a sunset or a sunrise showing crepuscular rays. And most people know what those are. You know, you're watching the sun at the horizon and uh, you see rays that are being cast through the clouds. The clouds are causing shadows, there are rays coming through that. NASA used to get trolled all the time on their Instagram page by flat earthers and moon truthers. Uh, seems to have tailed off somehow. Sometimes I wonder if flat earthers, some of them aren't really flat earthers, they just, just like stirring the pot and like the attention. The comment was crepuscular rays, the angle of crepuscular rays to the sun prove that the sun, the sun is only 3,000 miles away. Now, this is more nonsense, right? Uh, I think 
the majority of people understand that those rays are actually parallel and the convergence is caused by them disappearing into the distance just like a set of railroad tracks converge into the distance. So my response was, oh really, what do hashtag anti-crepuscular rays prove? Because in certain conditions, and I've seen this exactly once, those crepuscular rays can actually travel all the way across the sky and converge at the antisolar point. So the point in the sky opposite the sun, where there isn't anything <laughs> that's 3,000 miles away. With about a year or so after Beth and I got married, we took a camping trip to Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, which is on the coast of Lake Superior. It's a stunningly beautiful place, so if you ever get a chance to go there, I highly recommend it. You've got uh, an area called the Grand Sable Banks, which are just an amazing, uh, not quite a cliff, you can actually walk down this, good luck walking back up, about 600 feet down to, uh, to Lake Superior. There is a beach, happens to be 12 miles long, it's called 12 Mile Beach. That's where the campground is, it's actually on a bluff above the beach. Um, and then there are, further west from that, there are sea cliffs, about 200 feet uh, tall. So stunning, stunning um, geography, great for photography, go there. So we were camped at 12 Mile Beach and one morning, and it was this time of year, we went up there for the fall color. So it was getting towards October, might have been into early October, but we were camped at 12 Mile Beach, again on the bluff above the beach, and I got up early one morning and stepped out and it was right about sunrise. And from our campsite, we had a view of Lake Superior to the northwest. And I, I looked and I thought, why does it look like the sun is rising over there when the sun is over there? And I realized, I went, whoa, those are crepuscular rays, but they're not where the sun is. They're actually coming all the way across the sky from the sun. I didn't know they were called anti-crepuscular rays until later. Makes sense. Anti-solar, anti-crepuscular rays. So um, here's a photo. That's a shot on film. Uh, probably Fujichrome Velvia with some Canon film SLR, probably um, EOS 5, uh, not EOS 5, an A2E, which is called the EOS 5 in other countries other than the United States. So, you know, it's just a really kind of an amazing moment. So obviously, you know, the crepuscular rays, the angle to the sun does not prove the sun is 3,000 miles away because there's really no angle there. But it does point out that whenever you see crepuscular rays, if you're at a sunrise or a sunset and you can see crepuscular rays and you can also see the opposite horizon, might not be a bad idea to turn around because it could be happening and how many times has it happened where people are like wow look at those crepuscular rays and they don't realize there's another show right behind them you know as far as um, arguing with people with such views and we seem to have right now a lot of people who have non-scientific anti-scientific views that runs the gamut right but there is no point in engaging because you're never going to convince them it's just it's it's a fruitless endeavor they will in fact double down whenever you try to convince them but somebody that they're wrong um, they'll double down it brings up a couple of um, quotes first one is uh, it is not possible to reason someone out of a position they didn't reason themselves into the second one is arguing with in search your flavor of science denier or whatever person really has steadfast but wrong views. So arguing with somebody like that is like playing chess with a pigeon. The bird knocks over all the pieces, craps all over the board, and then struts around like it won. You're not going to win. Speaking of somebody with a science background, 
yeah, somebody who was interested in science very early on, and I don't know if it had anything to do with the fact that I was born um, right around the time that the Soviet Union launched Sputnik, and so all of a sudden that, that freaked out the United States of America, and there was a really huge push to get people trained in science. And I, I think that would, would be good for us to return to that so that people are not hoodwinked by people who purvey misinformation about science. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this little slightly off-topic um, discussion. If you did, hey, hit that like button. That's a big help to me. Uh, if you want to leave a comment below, please do. Uh, I'm Todd Banner, and I will see you next time.